This video will demonstrate uh, manually adding a product to your SI2015 catalog. So to do that, go to Start, Catalog, Manage Products. And here's a list of uh, existing products that you would have in your catalog. Um, if you downloaded them or manually entered them, possibly imported them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit the New button here. You can also right click, go to New, Control N. Uh, multiple ways to create a product. This will open up a new product form. So I'm going to go through the process and take you through building um, a few different products. Um, I'll, you know, I'll do a speaker here and uh, then a bulk wire. It's important you, that you know um, how wire uh, behaves in the software. So um, manufacturer, uh, you have a list here of your current manufacturers. Um, if this is a new one, go ahead and click new and uh, manually type it in. I'm just going to make one up. So ABC one two three. Come up with a model number. Um, I'll just uh, Nova eight. I'm just making that up. Um, category. This is a required field. So here's a list of uh, some categories uh, that exist in your um, current catalog. Um, I'm going to choose an existing one here. To speakers. If you needed to create a, a category, you could do that here with uh, the new button. And then I'll add. You know, subcategory here. Each category has a specific set of subcategories to further identify it. So we're going to call this a uh, ceiling speaker. And um, now, if this was a real product um, with a real manufacturer model, you could do a web search here if you wanted to get additional information. Uh, possibly um, going out to try to find uh, a description, maybe that you want to copy and paste, or uh, a JPEG image. Even you can go to Google and you know search here or under products or images. Uh, I've gone ahead and pulled up Google and copied uh, an image and I'm just going to click the paste button here and so it puts an image here. Now the image can be used on proposals, it can um, also be used inside of the Visio interface on a line diagram page. Um, if you want to put a URL here, if you actually go to the site, go ahead. Um, you could enter a part number here if it's different. Uh, the only three required fields are manufacturer, model, and category though. But in order to uh, produce a decent looking proposal or, or get good data in here, um, you're going to want to enter a few more things here, like pricing, <laughs> primarily pricing. But um, here you can go to the description uh, tab. There's a short description and a long description. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, all of the reports by default use the short description. Um, you can set the client reports to use the long description um, instead of the short if you'd like uh, to do that. I'm just going to enter here and say like 8 inch um, speaker. Very generic, but of course be as elaborate as you want in your description. So uh, whatever you think will look good on your um, proposal reports as well as uh, internal reports. Uh, the price tab here, um, I'm set up to show one level of pricing here. Uh, the default, I, you'll see A, B, and C here. You can always manage that right here and turn these on or off. Um, put a unit cost and a unit price. If you want to enter an MSRP, you can. Uh, you don't have to. This is a placeholder and can be used to calculate your cost or your price uh, using price rules. Um, totally other video on that, but you know maybe I'll just be proper and put in uh, the MSRP is one hundred dollars uh, for the speaker. Uh, when entering speakers, you, uh, you should enter them singly, even if you buy them in pairs, uh, especially if you're going to be doing drawings. It just works better um, in the software. You'll be able to get a, a unique shape for each speaker. So having said that, I'm just going to enter this as a single speaker's price for a single here. We'll say that um, cost here is you know, 50, you know, price 100. I'm just making this up. Uh, or you can type in the margin. It's up to you how you want to set your pricing. Um, choose a phase. This is important for charging labor. So we're going to say that this is a trim piece of equipment and we'll put half an hour install time on the product. Now, um, technically, you're done at this point. You, you um, can save this and it's proposal ready data. You've got pricing, you've got your labor information down here uh, because you've got phase rates set up. Um, if you've watched some of the previous videos to charge half an hour at whatever your trim out um, labor rate is, uh, this is ready to go into a proposal. Now, there are more tabs up along the top. Um, a lot have to do with drawings, um, like specifications tab. Here you can see height, width, depth, weight, um, all kinds of fields that you can fill in if you'd like. Um, if you're not planning to do an elevation drawing, which is uh, in either Visual AutoCAD, which is a scaled drawing, uh, you don't have to put in dimensions for a part, of course. Um, also, inputs and outputs here. Uh, this is um, for doing a schematic drawing in Visio or AutoCAD where we list the inputs and outputs and allow you to do wire connections. 
Um, so real quickly, let's do this. It's a simple speaker um, that I've made up in my head. So I get to pick the that it has one input here. And as you start typing here, uh, you'll see your list come down. Or you can type in something brand new if you'd like. But I'm just going to call the terminal SPK. The signal, uh, let's do audio, and then the label, real simply, SPK. So um, obviously, like if this was a receiver, there'd be quite a lot more inputs and outputs that you could enter here, um, which again is the advantage to downloading from DTools. A lot of our data will have this information, um, especially our partner data. But um, if you have to hand enter a part like we're doing here, you can always come here and, of course, you know, enter your inputs and outputs. So we'll just go ahead and do that and save this. Um, of course, if you want to go further, add any custom fields to this or accessorize this. These are all, um, you know, separate videos that we'll demonstrate. But really get up to this price tab um, from left to right here. Uh, fill in these fields. And again, you've got proposal ready data. So uh, we'll just go ahead and save this. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate now adding a wire to the software, primarily a bulk wire, a wire that is coming off of a spool. So we'll go uh, click the new button. This will open the form again. Uh, we'll choose the same manufacturer that we just demonstrated. And I'm just going to generically put in, uh, this is a 14.2 speaker wire. Category is going to be wire and cable. So let's go find that in the list. Here we go. Subcategory here. Um, again, uh, it's a good idea to add this. It's, it helps you find things quicker. So uh, I'm just going to call this, it's an audio wire. Uh, put a description in here if you would like. Uh, 14 to whatever you want to say. Shielded, non-shielded, plenum. Uh, just make something up. Plenum speaker wire. And um, now the key thing about when you're entering a wire product is you have to determine whether it's bulk wire or if it's not bulk wire. If it's like a cable, like a uh, HDMI cable that's pre-terminated and the model number defines the length and there's different model numbers for each set length of these, you know, audio wires, things like that. Um, if it's bulk wire, if it's coming off of a spool like this uh, is, on the specifications tab, I notice it's a little different also from a, a standard product like that speaker we were adding. Uh, we don't have height, width, depth, things like that on, on a wire, but we do have a diameter field if you want to fill that in. Um, this is the key thing here for setting up bulk wire is this checkbox that says bulk wire. So um, when you do that and check this box, um, it's going to treat this wire on a per foot basis now. And this goes back to your wire settings, which will be your default wire length when you're adding bulk wire to a project. Uh, you'll be prompted uh, to enter wire length. Um, obviously, it'll default with your pre-settings out there, but you'll be able to change it as needed. Um, so. The key thing here is when you're entering the price, put it in per foot. So do the math on whatever you pay for the spool. Um, in fact, if you want the MSRP up here to be the spool price just for your reference, um, you won't be able to calculate off of this because you're going to have to divide it by the footage. But you could have that up here. Let's say it's 300 bucks a spool. Get yeah, up to you. Or you could put the MSRP per foot if you really wanted to. But your cost and your price should be by the foot. So again, I'm going to make something up and say it's 15 cents. Cost 15 cents a foot. Um, sell it out at 30 cents a foot. Uh, again, you want to choose a phase and a number of labor hours here, so I'm going to choose uh, rough in in this case. And uh, now this gets tricky here for the labor hours um, because labor hours are also going to be per foot. So um, based on a, a hundred foot drop, the easy math here um, for, to get a starting point would be to put in 0.005. Uh, that means for a hundred feet of wire when added to a project, if you move this decimal place two places over for the hundred feet, uh, it would be half an hour to run that wire. So you can adjust up or down from here. Point zero zero five is just kind of a, a good middle point there to start with. Um, again, if you want to go slightly above that and say you know point zero zero seven, um, you'll see over time um, what makes sense for what it takes your team to to run wires, and also varies per job and so forth. So this is how you go about setting up a uh, bulk wire and. Again, just to be proper, if you want to put an image here, I've gone ahead and copied one here, and we'll paste that in here. So uh, again, this shows up on uh, proposal reports, and it could be used on the line diagram in Visio um, if you really wanted to. So uh, when you're done adding your product, go ahead and click Save.